This is part 7 of my talk on diagnostic accuracy and I'm going to be talking about how we can combine the results of more than one test. We can have a decision tree where the patient presents and we perform the first test. If we get a conclusive result, either positive or negative from that, we have a diagnosis. But if we have got an inconclusive result, we have to go on and perform a second test. Hopefully that will give us a conclusive diagnosis, but it might also give an inconclusive result where we have to perform a third test. We may get a conclusive result or an inclusive result, which means we still need further investigations. That's what we mean by a decision tree. So here's an example decision tree. Suppose we have an unknown adult who walks into the room and we need to make a decision, are they a man or a woman? Well, we could apply the beard test because we know that if they have a beard, they're quite likely to be a man. But if they don't have a beard, it's not conclusive, so we could eye them up and use the height test. And if they're less than 165 centimetres, we might con come to the conclusion that they're a woman. And if they're more than 175 centimetres, we might come to the conclusion that they're a man. But if they're in the intermediate range of 165 to 175, we say the height test is still inconclusive and we have to use other tests to judge whether they're a man or a woman. As a rather trivial example, but it does show how you can use a decision tree to do one test and if that's not conclusive, to move on to a second test. The problem is we know the sensitivity and specificity of each of these tests but how do we combine those together to get a result from more than one test? Well, we can make life easier if we use something called the likelihood ratio. The likelihood ratio is defined for a given test result. Either a positive result or a negative result gives different likelihood ratios. But the likelihood ratio is the likelihood that patients do have the disease divided by the likelihood that patients don't have the disease. That may sound a bit complicated, let's just look at it step by step. For a positive result, the likelihood ratio for a positive result, LR plus, is defined as the true positives over the true positives plus the false negatives divided by the false positives over the false positives plus the true negatives. Looking at that, the true positives are the number of positive results with the disease, the true positives, divided by the total with the disease gives us the likelihood that patients do have the disease. That's what's in the top half of this ratio. The bottom half of the ratio is the false positives that's the positive results without the disease divided by the total without the disease. That is the likelihood that patients don't have the disease. Remembering that this is all defined for the positive result. So the numerator of that, the true positive over true positive plus false negatives, if we remember from a previous part of this lecture, is just defined as the sensitivity. And the false positives over the false positive plus the true negatives is just 1 minus the specificity. So that simplifies to sensitivity divided by 1 minus specificity. We can define a likelihood ratio for the negative result in the same way, which turns out to be equal to 1 minus the sensitivity divided by the specificity. That might seem like a really complicated thing to do, but you'll see the benefit of it shortly. But we already know that sensitivity and specificity are independent of prevalence. They don't change when you change the prevalence. And so these likelihood ratios, which are just mixtures of sensitivity and specificity, are also independent of prevalence. So they are numbers that define the test and don't depend on the patients that we apply the test to. So let's calculate the likelihood ratio for our beard test. We already 
have these numbers of true positives and false positives, true negatives and false negatives for the Beard test, and the likelihood ratio for a positive result was defined as the true positives divided by the total number of men, which is 9 over 50, divided by the false positives divided by the total number of women, which is 1 over 50. So the likelihood ratio for a positive uh, test result turns out to be 9. What that means is that if you have a positive test result, if you have a beard, the likelihood ratio of 9 means that you're 9 times more likely to be a man than a woman. We can also define the likelihood ratio for a negative test result, which is the false negatives as a fraction of that column, 41 over 50, divided by the true negatives as a fraction of its own column, 49 over 50. And that comes out to be 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is rather close to 1, so if you don't have a beard, that is, you've got a negative test result, you're only slightly less likely to be a man, 0 0.8 times as likely to be a man. So a likelihood ratio of 0 0.8 doesn't change things very much, but the likelihood ratio for a positive test result of 9 changed things quite significantly. So a large likelihood ratio is useful. One close to 1 is not very useful. But we've also looked at the height test, and if we split the results of the height test into three different height ranges, then we can work out that for a result of less than 165 centimeters, the likelihood ratio is going to be 3 over 50 divided by 25 over 50, which is 0.12, a rather small likelihood, which makes it less likely that you're a man if you're under 165 centimeters tall. The middle height range of 165 to 175 centimeters gives a likelihood ratio of 17 over 50 divided by 22 over 50, which is 0 0.8, which is rather equivocal. It hardly changes things at all because it's close to 1. On the other hand, for a height result of more than 175 centimeters, the likelihood ratio is 30 over 50 divided by 3 over 50, which is 10. So a likelihood ratio of 10 means you're 10 times more likely to be a man if you're over 175 centimeters, and that's a useful result. So actually, a small likelihood ratio or a large likelihood ratio are both useful. It's the likelihood ratio close to 1 that isn't very useful. Just to complete the picture, I need to define something else, the odds ratio. The odds ratio is the probability of having the disease divided by the probability of not having the disease. So it's probability over 1 minus the probability. Now, if you're a gambling person, odds will already be familiar to you. As scientists, we tend to talk about probabilities as percent, and that's what I've been talking about all the time during this lecture. But odds are the same thing uh, in other terms, in betting terms. For example, if scientifically we have a probability of 0 0.67, then the odds is going to be the probability over the 1 minus the probability, which is 0 0.67 divided by 0 0.33, which is 2, or an odds of 2 to 1. On the other hand, a probability of 0 0.5 would give an odds of 0 0.5 over 1 minus 0 0.5, which is 1, 1 to 1, or evens. And a probability of 0 0.33 would give an odds of 0 0.33 over 1 minus 0 0.33, which is um, 0 0.5 to 1. Or, in betting terms, you turn it the other way around and say it's 2 to 1 against. So you see that the scientific probabilities can be translated into odds of something to 1.
and it turns out that odds are actually going to be more useful to us in this particular case rather than the scientific probability but they are related. Doing tests is all about changing the odds because before you do the test there's a certain probability that the patient has the disease we call that the prior probability or the pretest probability this is the chance that the patient presenting to you has the disease based on what we already know about them. The purpose of doing the test is to try and make that probability more certain and a positive result will increase the probability and a negative result will reduce the probability that they have the disease. So doing the test is all about changing the probability or changing the odds. And in fact using odds rather than probability makes the calculation easier. Um, in fact the post-test odds, the odds of having the disease after we've done the test, are equal to the pre-test odds, the odds of having the disease before the test, multiplied by the likelihood ratio for the given result from this test. So taking the pre-test odds and multiplying by the likelihood ratio gives us the post-test odds. That's a rather nice and neat expression. If you express the same thing in probabilities it gets rather messy as indeed um, I showed you in a previous equation when I mentioned Bayes' theorem before. This is the simple form of Bayes' theorem and if we write it in terms of odds and likelihood ratio Bayes' theorem is rather simple. That's all it says. Doing the test changes the odds by the likelihood ratio. So let's see how we can put that into practice. Using this Bayesian method we can look at our decision tree to decide whether our unknown adult was a man or a woman. We've had this decision tree already. Let's put some odds into it. Well what are the odds that an unknown adult is a male or female? The odds are evens, one to one, because there's a 50% chance that they're male if we haven't done any tests yet. That's the pretest odds. We de do the beard test and we know that the likelihood ratio for a positive beard test is 9. So that changes the odds by a factor of 9. 1 to 1 becomes 9 to 1. 9 to 1 is a pretty decent bet. So I think you would be confident in saying that this person who's walked into the room with a beard is a man and we'll stop at that. We won't do any further tests. Odds of 9 to 1 is good enough. But if they don't have a beard, we get a negative result for the beard test. The likelihood ratio for that was 0.8. So we take the pretest odds of 1 to 1 and multiply by 0.8 and we get a new odds of 0.8 to 1. That's still pretty uncertain. It's not enough to conclude either way. So we eye them up for height and apply the height test. If they're shorter than 165 centimeters, the likelihood ratio for that was 0.12. So we take the new pretest odds of 0.8 to 1, multiply by 0.12, and we get 0.1 to 1. Multiplying 0.8 by 0.12 gives 0.1. 0.1 to 1 is 10 to 1 against. So this makes it very unlikely that they are a man and quite likely that they're a woman. So we can be fairly certain that this short person who's walked into the room without a beard is going to be a woman and we'll leave it at that. If they are taller than 175 centimeters, the likelihood ratio for that was 10, so we take the pretest odds of 0.8, multiply by the likelihood ratio of 10, gives us a new odds of 8 to 1, pretty certain that they're a man, we can leave it there. Our likelihood ratio for our intermediate result was equal to 0.8, so we take the pretest odds of 0.8 multiplied by the likelihood ratio of 0.8 that gives us an odds of 0.6 to 1 still not enough to be conclusive we go on to do more tests. So you can see that working with odds and likelihood ratios allows us to keep on through our decision tree until we come to a conclusive result one way or the other. So the odds ratio represents the chance that the patient has the disease. The likelihood ratio measures how the odds are changed by a given test result.
and multiplying the pre-test odds by the likelihood ratio gives us the post-test odds and that's all that Bayes' theorem is about. So all these odds and likelihood ratios are really quite important in deciding what test to do next and coming to a conclusion, a conclusion about a patient's disease. So that ends part 7 of my lecture on diagnostic accuracy.